Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part one of what will be a massive web design and programming tutorial. I'm going to try to combine all of the requests that I have received for you, from you guys into one massive tutorial. We're going to very, very specifically cover PHP, SQL, MySQL, jQuery, JavaScript, obviously. And finally, we're going to create WordPress themes and WordPress plugins. And along the way, you guys tell me what you want to see programmed, and I will create it. Well, to start off, I've already done a PHP tutorial, but I didn't really like the way that it came out. You guys told me you like this format better where I have the code on the left and on the right the output. So I'm going to follow that general guideline here as well. But we're going to first focus in and I'm going to guess that you understand the basics of HTML. Here's our HTML code just starting off here and I'm going to focus in on PHP. If you do not know HTML I'll provide a link to a tutorial on it. To start using PHP, it's quite simple. You just go right into your HTML code. The only difference is this file is going to end with PHP instead of HTML like you would normally end it. And if you want to insert some PHP code in here, all you do is have this opening bracket, just like any other tag, followed by a question mark, followed by PHP. And then here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to echo or print to the screen the words website title. And it is going to get it inserted directly right into your HTML code. End it with a semicolon and then a question mark and then a closing bracket. Now, whenever this is loaded, it's automatically going to put this up in here for the website title. So if I save it, jump over here and reload this page, you see website title now shows up here. So this is the echo command. This is what you will, for the most part, use to print to screen. Now you can use what are called short codes, and I'm going to show you what that means, like this, and skip putting in the PHP right there. However, I would not do this. And in fact, if you're using an up-to-date PHP 6 interpreter, this short code used to work, and it no longer works with the percent sign that's actually normally used with a other programming language called ASP. So whenever you're using PHP, it's preferable to start off your code, and your code is going to lie between this opening tag and this closing tag with PHP instead of without it. If you want to put a comment inside of here, let's first off define our body and close it. So let's say inside of the body, you want to again create an area where you're going to have PHP code. Just do it just like that. And if you wanted to have a single line comment, you could use these two forward slashes, or you could use a hashtag, or if you wanted to have a multi-line comment, you would do it just like that with the forward slash star and then a star and the forward slash. I actually prefer to never use this one. But for the most part, I actually use multi-line comments a lot, but I leave that to you. To print the screen, you can use a couple different commands. Here's echo and see I'm inserting the HTML directly right inside of this. It's just going to print this right to screen automatically nobody's even going to see it whenever they go to your web page. Even if they hit view source, they're going to see this HTML because PHP operates and does all of this code back on the server, not in the actual browser. And then, of course, you have to put your closing tag inside of here. And then if I save it and jump over here, you can see random text pops up here on the screen. Well, there's other different ways. You, for the most part, you're going to use echo to print the screen, but you could also use the print command. You can see here specifically I'm using braces, and you always want to end any of your statements with a semicolon. You could also print on multiple lines, and it's going to work. See? And even though there is no space here, it automatically, as you can see, even though I jump to a new line, it's going to print them there with that one string. If you wanted to create a variable, say random variable, I'm going to call it, Whenever you're creating variables, remember semicolon, if you're creating a variable, every single variable name starts off with a dollar sign and then either starts with an underscore or a letter every single time. After that point, you can use underscores, other letters, or numbers in your variable names. But understand that this variable here is not equal, and you're going to see what this is, not equal, that's a not equal sign inside of PHP, that is not equal to this because PHP is case sensitive. So there's another thing to know about variables. Now let's say you created this variable and you wanted to be able to print this to screen. How would you do that? Well, use the echo command and you could combine these in multiple different ways. Here I'm going to put a colon 
rand variable, comma. And if I save that, jump over here, you can see it put cats are funny in here. Automatically it pulled that, stuck it right there. But you could also do this by putting a period. This is actually called string concatenation, which is just a fancy word for combining strings. And if you save that and then reload the page, you're gonna see it still prints identically the same exact thing. Well, if you want to do special formatting inside of PHP, that's easy as well. So let's say I'll introduce here another function called printf. Remember, you're going to latch on to one or another of these guys. I'm just sort of combining them all and showing you all of them so that you can then make a decision on your own. Here, what you're going to do is define, much like another language that I taught about called Python, you're going to define where you want your variables to show up or where you want values to show up inside of your text. And again, this only works with printf. All of the print, echo, and printf are all completely different and here I'm defining that this is going to be a number and that here I'm defining that this is going to be a string that is going to get stuck in that area years old and just come down here pi is equal to in here I'm going to define that I want a floating point number or a number with a decimal place that has two decimal places and then I'm gonna put an F in there for float comma and then here I can say my name which is a string that's why that is an s it's very important to get these right 35 is a number like here just think digit 3.14 close that off close that off save it and you can see that it printed it out my name is Derek 35 years old and pi is equal to 3.14 the reason why it shows two digits doesn't have anything to do with this being two digits long you can see I'll make it I'll make it even longer control s see it still is only showing 3.14 because I put 0.2 between the percent sign and the F. Now, in regards to actual variable types and names, there are Booleans, and a Boolean is going to be equal to false or zero. Another, meaning the only other Boolean that's available to you, is true. True, unlike false, is going to be equal to any number. So. 23, 54, 145, doesn't matter. They're all considered true values inside of PHP and also most languages. Then you have integers, which are just numbers that do not have a decimal place. 234, for example. And the maximum size that you're going to have for your integers in most PHP previous to 6 is 2 to the power of 31. With PHP 6, you can actually go to the power of 63, but that's probably not going to be important to you. And then you have floats, example one, three, five. And it's just a number with a decimal place. And if you wanted to print this float to screen using echo, cost, colon, and I'm putting a dollar sign there. And then let's say I wanted to make this two decimal places just to mess this up. Let's go four, three, two, okay. I could use the number format function, dollar sign, float ex1, and then say that I want it to be two decimal places, comma, jump over here, and you can see it chopped off the re remaining digits because I said that I want it to print the screen with just two decimal places. And whenever you're operating on numbers inside of PHP, you can, of course, use plus, minus, division, multiplication, modulus, which is going to return the remainder of a division. You can increment by one with two plus signs or decrement or decrease by one with two minus signs. But we're going to get into a ton more examples with these. So if some of those don't make sense to you, don't worry about it. And there's also strings. So let's say I want to create first name, doctor. I've never watched Doctor Who, by the way. I don't even know why I'm typing this in. And you combine strings with the concatenation tool, which I showed you just a little bit ago, which is just a period. And let's say I want to put a space between there. Just want to put two quotes inside of there. Last name. Don't forget semicolon. And here I'm going to show you something else with PHP that's kind of neat. Depending upon which quote you use, whether it's a single quote or a double quote, you're going to get totally different results. So let's call echo and how do quotes differ? And I'm going to put in here whole name and here I'm going to use the break symbol instead, which if you don't know what HTML is, is going to skip to the next line. And you see these are double quoted. What would happen if I single quote them? You're going to see. It's like that. 
and you can see here exactly what is the difference between double quotes. Double quotes will automatically pull in whatever the value for this variable is, while if you use single quotes, you're gonna get printed out exactly what lies between those single quotes. And if you're wondering why the break statement didn't show up, it's because it's recognizing it. This is a browser, remember. It is recognizing this as a tag to skip to a new line. So that's the reason why that is showing like it is. If you'd like to create a constant variable inside of PHP, meaning a variable that is not going to change, you use the define function. And this is normally almost always done at the very beginning. And I'm just going to call it a constant. And you have to surround it with quotes. Let's just say 2345 is a very important thing to me. Now this value can never change throughout the rest of your PHP code. And if I wanted to print it out the screen equals, I would just put a period because there are no dollar signs in front of constants, a constant. And this is string concatenation again, just combining some strings, that's all. And there it is, a constant equals 2345. And you may ask yourself, well, what do I do if I actually want to use double quotes inside of PHP because they are surrounded, like you see here, with double quotes? Well, you could either just simply use single quotes, obviously, or you backslash escape those quotes, just like this. And you can see those quotes went right inside of there, just like I asked it to. And there are a whole bunch of other different escape characters. Like you're probably guessing, you can escape single quotes. You can escape the backslash itself, a new line, return, tab, dollar sign, obviously, since it's used for variables. And that's for the most part, all of the different escape codes that are available inside of PHP. I'm gonna come in here and delete some of this so I stop junking up the screen. To a certain extent, PHP will automatically convert any of your variables to a needed variable, so like a variable type. So let's say, for example, you have a string that contains the value of 28. What would happen if you would come in here and multiply that string, which is a string of characters, times a float, which we have up here at the top of the screen? It's automatically going to convert it into a number and then perform the multiplication. Of course, it's not going to change. It's not going to be a number. Afterwards, though, it's going to remain a string. So PHP is smart in regards to recognizing that you would want to multiply those digits out. However, if you would actually want to convert or what they call cast one variable type into another variable type. So let's say we want to do load example two. It's equal to, you surround, so here I want to turn this float into an integer. You put those two braces there with int in the middle, and float, example, one. And if I echo to screen, and I'm going to come in here, put a break, you can see that it automatically changed it from a float to an integer. Now, if you would want to convert anything else, for example, if you wanted to turn one variable type into an array, you would use these braces ahead of it. If you'd like to turn it into a boolean, remember, the only thing that's going to become false is if you pass it as a value of zero. Inside of Python 6, there are 64-bit integers available. You want to convert it into an object, you just do that. Float, double, which is very similar to a float, we would use that. And if you wanted to convert something into a string, you would proceed it with these, this code right here. And remember, that is called casting. And if you actually wanted to find out what type of variable you're working with, you would use a function called get type. Here, I'm going to pass it string num. And if you reload it, see string shows up right there. I'm going to throw this in here so it's a little bit easier to see. And string pops up right there. And the final thing I'm going to show you is a whole bunch of other different ways of finding out if something is a string or not, or is any type of variable. Let's again pass in is this, copy the whole thing, paste that in there. Here I'm using a function called is string, and you're gonna see one comes back which is equal to true. And again, you can check what type of variable you're using. If you would use the function is array, is underscore bool, is underscore float, is underscore integer spelled out is null and we're going to get a lot more into that later or is object so there's a whole bunch of basics mainly focused on variables inside of php believe me this tutorial is going to get a lot more complicated really fast if you have any other questions or comments leave them down below till next time